You've got three options when it comes to finishing your plates once you've stripped them to bare iron. You can just oil your plates with 3-in-1 oil and be done with them. That's what I did years and years and years ago with this York 45 milled pair. By years and years and years ago, I mean about six years ago. So six years later, you can see that I've only re-oiled them once. And, admittedly, here in Pittsburgh, it's not the same climate as if you lived in, let's say, Florida. But these held up very well with just some oil on them. So, really, it's just the aesthetic appeal of this more flat-looking gray versus the second option, which is to use a clear coat. The clear coat gives you protection from rust, you don't have to re-oil as with just oiling, and in the case of the satin clear coat, there's just a touch of a shine to it to help accentuate some of the character of the plate. I wanted to use satin black. I use the Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 satin black. Sometimes the can looks like this. The two-in-one, it's a paint and primer mix. So effectively, you save a little time. You don't have to spray a primer and then spray the paint. Now, some of you out there that have painted plates might be thinking, well, I don't use a primer. Well, you should. If you have a paint and primer, it's going to help that paint from chipping as easily, and it's going to help it go on nice and evenly. So please spend the extra dollar or two and get the two-in-one paint and primer. Now with the satin black, that's what I preferred. However, watch for a future video where I compare flat, satin, semi-gloss, and matte black finishes. Let's take a look at the process of painting and what you'll need besides the paint. With both the paint and the clear coat, you're going to need painter's triangles. I like to set them on a piece of cardboard in my backyard and then put the plate on top the reason for this is that then it leaves a small gap between the cardboard and the plate. That way the plate doesn't sit perfectly flat against the cardboard or the plastic and cause the edges to pull up with paint or cause the edges to stick and then peel off some. This little gap in between will make your corners and edges look perfect. With the satin black and the clear coat, you want to apply more than one coat. The biggest tip I can give you for spraying would be to go in slow, even passes about a foot to a foot and a half away and not to be concerned with any types of missed spots or splotches with the first coat. There's a reason there's a second coat. It's better to underspray than overspray. You can always go back and add another coat, but once you put too much on, it is really hard to remove a drip or a pulled up section that's going to make your plate look bad. Go slow, go even, and use multiple coats. My next tip for painting or clear coating is to let it completely dry. I get excited with projects. I want to move on with the next step of the project. I want to see the finished product. I get it. I understand. You've got a busy schedule too. Maybe you just really want to finish this up but let it dry. Let it sit overnight if you have to before the second coat. It's better to let it completely dry than to proceed, flip it and leave fingerprints on it or put that second coat on and now it's not laying as evenly or flatly as you would like. Dry times vary because of temperature and environment. For me here in Pittsburgh, in the beginning of the summer with about 75 to 80 degrees sunny day, it only took about four hours for these plates to completely dry. I did two coats on the front, two coats on the back, and then with the clear coat, it just seemed a little thin. 
This is my first experience with the clear coat, so just to be safe, I gave it a third spraying of clear coat on each side. One big tip for clear coating is that it was extremely helpful to get a nice, clear, very lustrous looking bare metal to hit it with a wire brush or wire wheel and then wipe it down just before spraying. The satin black turned out really nice. I liked how even and smooth the paint went on, which I attribute to stripping it down to bare iron. But for me, personally, the clear coat stole the show. I'm not saying I'm going to clear coat all of my weights in the future. To be honest, personally, I prefer original paint more than anything. But I love the look of these clear coat, and I decided to add a couple more clear coated plates to my collection in the form of these 35s that I was working on in this project as well. And I love the way the clear coat turned out on the 35s. You're excited to have them finished and have the paint or clear coat dry, but there's one more step. This comes from that fellow collector that had told me about the painter's triangles. He advised, and I agree, use a brass brush or a small wire cup to hit the center circle of your plate and get any errant paint or clear coat off of the inner portion of that center circle. Otherwise, when you put these on the bar, you're going to end up with some black paint or some clear coat on your barbell sleeve. And who wants that? Now, I did give these about a week to completely set and completely dry. That's overkill. I don't think you really have to go that long. But if you have extra plates that you're going to use in the meantime and you don't need these on the bar, why not? Some people like to letter their plates and take a paint pen or a sharpie and go through the lettering. I decided not to on these particular plates, but I've heard of great results with a sharpie or a paint pen on the lettering and the numbering. Watch for that video of different types of black paint and the different results with satin or matte or flat black or semi-gloss. In the meantime, look for those old weights because old weights, new gains. This is Vintage Weights PGH. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe.